What does only buy strong stocks in a bull market really mean? Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. All right, so if you read the book Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, and if you haven't, what are you doing? I recommend that you do. It costs you absolutely hardly anything from Amazon, absolutely nothing, but it's, what is it, $5, $10 or something from Amazon. Really great book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, as well as some other books. I've done a kind of book review before. I talked about great trading books, and that's definitely one of them that's up there. In fact, I've just finished it again on audiobook because I like it so much. I like to listen to one of the greatest speculators of all times because the lessons he talks about in there are lessons that you will hold forever in your trading career. As long as you'll be trading, you will always be thinking about some of these lessons. He's made a lot of money, he's lost a lot of money, and we know the cycle he went through. However, there's no dispute in the fact that he had the ability to make good money trading and reading the market. And so this is one of the things he said, buy strong stock, Jesse Livermore, by the way, buy strong stocks in a bull market, sell weak stocks in a bear market. And this is a common thing that many great traders, hedge fund managers, investors, the greats of our time and the greats of history say to do when you are speculating in the markets, whether you have a long-term view or even a short-term view. And actually it works even on an intraday basis, guys. So what's the point of it? So the theory of this, right, is that if you have a bull market, that means that the whole market generally, the tide is rising and it's lifting everybody up. Now, if you, a lot of a mistake that a lot of traders make, and we look at it from a swing trading perspective, is they will buy the stock that has not moved the most. Now, I'm not saying this is a complete disastrous strategy and there are ways that you could buy uh, the laggard in certain strategies and setups, I accept that. However, from a broad perspective, you want to buy the strongest stock possible, the stock that's got the most momentum in that market. Now, of course, some people are gonna say, well, it's overbought, so this, yes, I accept that, but let's keep it broad for now. But why do you want to buy the strongest stock? Because the strongest stock is attracting the most money flow into it, has the most supply and demand imbalance in your favor, i.e. into demand. And if you think about this, right, if we were to draw a chart here, and I've traded this way before, and I'll explain this in a second, and let's say we had the market doing this, right? And let's say we also had a stock doing this. So that's stock number A, and let's call that SPY for the market. And then we had another stock that was doing this. It was up a bit, and this was stock B. Okay, so we've got A, stock, spiders as a kind of benchmark and B. Now, as the market lifts up, you know, the mistake that people make is they think, well, you know, B is gonna have to catch up with the market. It's not rose as much. And the trouble you have with that is that very often, if this can't, if think about it, if you take a step back and a take a step back and a step back and a step back, and you think about gaming theory, and you think about who is trading the other side of the train? But I talk because this is very, very important, I believe. If you think about this, why are people not buying this when the market is high? Forget about anything else, whether you believe in the stock or don't believe in the stock. Why are people not buying it? Doesn't matter why they're not buying it, they're just not buying it. Now, could that change and could it suddenly shoot, suddenly shoot up? Of course, anything can happen in the market, that's why we have risk management. But the point is, if the market is rallying and this thing can't rally, what is gonna happen when the market does this and starts to pull back or starts to reverse, you can bet that the weakest stock is gonna get thrashed to the floor. It's gonna get absolutely hammered because if the same parameters are true all the way through the time, as in, hey, if this market's rolling, it's still not encouraging that many buyers, it's still not up that much, what's gonna happen when this comes down? If the buyers aren't coming in when the market's bullish and they've got a reason to buy, why are they gonna buy when the market is low? They're not, they're gonna run for the door and they're gonna cause a supply and demand imbalance, straight into the supply, it's gonna cause a dive to the floor. The strongest stock, is possibly the stock, and again, listen guys, this is generalizing as well, you know I've put loads of kind of caveats in here and you get the point, I know you guys do, but the point is, if it's a strong market, as a strong stock and a strong market, when the market's pulling back, this may well flatline. 
Because yes, of course, it's going to affect supply and demand because people look at the overall market and thinking, whoa, it's pulling back a bit. What's it going to do? But then you might find, you can go back and look at many chart patterns to confirm this, guys. When we start to push back up, this strong stock will have broken through the highs before this even re the general market even revisits the highs because it's got that strength behind it. It's got the fundamental buying. For whatever reasons, a lot of people want into that stock. And so, Flip it on its head as well for the bear market. If it's a bear market, you go for the one that's getting hammered the most because the same thing, as it starts to rally back up, you might see a flat line in that stock. However, the strong stock, people might have a reason to blast up and go dive in and buy the thing. And you might end up with a kind of odd scenario. So even though this is generalized, even though this is a broad perspective on it, it stands true. And it even stands true if you're trading on an intraday basis. If you're trading on an intraday basis, you often get this as well. A strong stock will be a strong stock. The market may stagnate for the afternoon. The stock might continue to grind upwards. Then the market has a little bit of an extra push in the, in the kind of late evening. Uh, if you're uh, in the UK, you're trading uh, East Coast stuff then the other stock as well will have a blast and it will actually do more. Whereas if you're trying to pick the weak stock thing that's gonna catch up, yes, of course, sometimes it does, but very often that thing's stagnating. And then in the afternoon, if the overall market starts to retrace, let's say back to the view app or back to a midpoint, doesn't extend that trend as you're expecting it to do, that stock then takes a bit of a beating because a lot of people are coming out. There's that overhang of supply which is still there and they've now got no reason to hold off the selling or there's no reason for buyers to kind of feed those sellers that are already there because the market's now coming down and you get a supply demand imbalance shift against you. So broad rule, makes perfect sense under most scenarios, Buy strong stocks in a bull market, sell weak stocks in a bear market. Thanks for that, Jesse Livermore, and take care. Whatever you're doing, guys, keep your risk managed. Goodbye.